And now part three. Uh, where was I? The man went away and washed, and when he returned, he could see. So he just helped someone cure his sight. His neighbours and those who were accustomed to see him begging said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Others said, Yes, this is the man. Others again said, No, but it is someone like him. The man himself said, I am the man. They asked him, How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Yeshua made a paste and smeared my eyes with it, and told me to go to Siloam and wash. I went and washed and gained my sight. Where is he? they asked. He answered, I do not know. The man who had been blind was brought before the Pharisees, as it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the paste and opened his eyes. The Pharisees now asked him by what means had he gained his sight. The man told them, He spread paste on my eyes, then I washed, and now I can see. Some of the Pharisees said, This fellow is no man of God, he does not keep the Sabbath. Others said, How could such signs come from a sinful man? So they took different sides, when they continued to question him. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened, he answered. It was a, he is a prophet. The Jews would not believe that the man had been blind and had gained his sight until they had summoned his parents and questioned them. Is this man your son? How do you say that he was born blind? How is it that he can see now? The parents replied, We know that he is our son and that he was born blind, but how it is that he can now see, or who opened his eyes, we do not know. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents gave this answer because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jewish authorities had already agreed that anyone who acknowledged Yeshua as Messiah should be banned from the synagogue. There is why That is why the parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time they summoned the man who had been blind and said, Speak the truth before God. We know that this fellow is a sinner. Whether or not he is a sinner, I do not know, the man replied. All I know is this. Once I was blind, now I can see. What did he do to you, they asked. How did he open your eyes? I have told you already, he retorted, but you took no notice. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they became abusive. You are that man's disciple, they said, but we are the disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as for this fellow, we do not know where he comes from. The man replied, What an extraordinary thing! Here is a man who has opened my eyes, yet you do not know where he comes from. It is common knowledge that God does not listen to sinners. He listens to anyone who is devout and obeys his will. To open the eyes of a man born blind, it is unheard of since time began. If that man had not come from God, he could have done nothing. Who are you to give us lessons, they retorted, born and bred in sin as you are. Then they expelled him from the synagogue. Yeshua heard that they had expelled him. When he found him, he asked, Have you faith in the Son of Man? The man answered, Tell me who he is, sir, that I should put my faith in him. You have seen him, said Yeshua. Indeed, it is he who is speaking to you. Lord, I believe, he said, and bowed before him. Yeshua said, It is for judgment that I have come into the world. All right, so let's stop there. So, clearly and utterly, have you found faith in the Son of Man? Tell me who it is, sir, so I can put my faith in him. You have seen him. Indeed, he is speaking to you. Jesus said, It is for judgment that I have come into this world, to give sight to the sightless, and to make blind those who see. Some Pharisees in his company asked, Do you mean that we are blind? If you were blind, said Yeshua, you would not be guilty. But because you say we see, 
your guilt remains. In truth, I tell you in very truth, the man who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in some other way, is nothing but a thief or a robber. The man who enters by the door is the shepherd in charge of the sheep. The doorkeeper admits him and the sheep hear the voice. This is about authority, I think. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought them all out, he goes ahead and the sheep follow, because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger. They will not run away from him. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. This was a parable that Jesus, Yeshua told them, but they did not understand what he meant by it. So Yeshua spoke again. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, I am the door of the sheepfold. The sheep paid no heed to anyone who came before me, for these were all thieves and robbers. I am the door. Anyone who comes into the fold through me shall be safe. He shall go in and out and find, shall find pasturage. Now we're on John 10, 7 here. 7 to 9. Now this is actually why I decided to do this video. Because I thought, you know, all the religions, all these religions, Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, da da da. And my point was, you know, they've all got, they've all, they're all wrong. They've all got errors. They've all got something wrong. <clears throat> and I was thinking, well, you know, what about, you know, the New Testament and, you know, because they're in the text, you've got to look for it, but there is the new religion, if you like, in the New Testament. And it is a new religion because the Jewish people don't have it in their books. They haven't continued it. It's, so it's a new religion. And it's not wrong. <laughs> so, you know, what he's just said there, he's the first one. I am the door. Hang on. The, the sheep paid no heed to anyone who came before me, for these were all thieves and robbers. So... Any one that claimed to have all the answers before had ulterior motives, according to that line. So I am the door. So he's he's the first one who's come with, you know, the correct way, or at least the correct way to start. He shall go in and out and shall find pasturage. Anyone who comes into the fold through me shall be safe. He shall go in and out and shall find pasture. So use this way and you're cool. You come and go and you'll be all right. You'll get sustenance. The thief comes only to steal, to kill, to destroy. I have come that men may have life and may have it in all its fullness. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hireling, when he sees the wolf coming, abandons the sheep and runs away, because he is no shepherd and the sheep are not his. Then the wolf harries the flock and scatters the sheep. The man runs away because he is a hireling and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep and my sheep know me. As the father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep, but there are other sheep of mine, not belonging to this fold, whom I must bring in, and they too will listen to my voice. There will, be then, there will then be one flock, one shepherd. Let me read that again. I am the good shepherd, I know my sheep, and my sheep know me, as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. But there are other sheep of mine, not belonging to this fold, whom I must bring in. And they too will listen to my voice. So here he's talking about the Gentiles, clearly. 
Except it's another premonition, a prophecy. It's probably an idea that's been going in his mind that the Jews are so stuck with the scripture and the law of Moses that they're, they're unmo unmoving, they won't listen. And he's already seen how a Roman had faith and his son was healed. So it's like working in his mind. But it's still God's plan, right? It's just understanding God's plan. There will then be one flock, one shepherd. So it will it will set the new standard. It will this will be the the truth and the way. The Father loves me because I lay down my life to receive it back again. No one has robbed me of it. I am laying it down of my own free will. I have the right to lay it down, and I have the right to receive it back again. This charge I have received from my father. So he's already at this stage understood, well he, he's hinted to it before even, um, but now it's probably clearer in his head what's going to happen. These words once again caused a split among the Jews. Many of them said, he is possessed, he is raving, why listen to him? Others said, no one possessed by an evil spirit could speak like this. Could an evil spirit open a blind, blind man's eyes? It was winter, and the festival of the dedication was being held in Jerusalem. Yeshua was walking in the temple precincts in Solomon's portico. The Jews gathered round him and asked, How long must you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, say so plainly. I have told you, said Yeshua, but you do not believe. My deeds done in my Father's name are my credentials, but because you are not sheep of my flock, you do not believe. My own sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one shall snatch them from my care. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all, and no one can snatch them out of the Father's care. My father and I are one. Once again the Jews picked up stones to stone him. At this Yeshua said to them, I have set before you the many good deeds done by my father's power. For which of these would you stone me? The Jews replied, We are not going to stone you for any good deed, but for your blasphemy. You, a mere man, claim to be a god. Yeshua answered, Is it not written in your own law? I said, You are gods. Those are called gods to whom the word of God was delivered, and scripture cannot be set aside. Then why do you charge me with blasphemy because I consecrated and sent into the world by my father said, I am God's son? If I am not acting as my father would, do not believe me, but if I am, accept the evidence of my deeds even if you do not believe me, so that you may recognise and know that the Father is in me, and I in the Father. This provoked them to one more attempt to seize him, but he escaped from their clutches. Yeshua withdrew again across the Jordan to the place where John had been baptising earlier. There he stayed while crowds came to him. They said, John gave us no miraculous sign, but all that he said about this man was true. Many came to believe in him there. There was a man named Lazarus who had fallen ill. His home was at Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus had fallen ill, was the woman who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent a message to him. Sir, you should know that your friend lies ill. When Yeshua heard this, he said, This illness will not end in death. It has come for the glory of God, to bring glory to the Son of God. And therefore, though he loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after hearing of his illness, Yeshua waited for two days in the place where he was. After this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. Rabbi, his disciples said, it is not long since the Jews there were wanting to stone you. Are you going there again? Yeshua replied, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Anyone can walk in at daytime without stumbling, 
because he sees the light of this world. But if he walks after nightfall, he stumbles because the light fails him. After saying this, he added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I shall go and wake him. The disciples said, Master, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Yeshua, however, had been speaking of his death, but they thought that he meant natural sleep. So, Yeshua hears about his friend's illness. Now, usually if the intention was purely to, to heal as soon as possible, he wouldn't have waited two days. But he says this is for the glorification of God. So he feels this is, God has sort of said, wait two days so that you can bring him back from death. Then Yeshua spoke out plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad not to have been there. It will be for your good and for the good of your faith. But let us go to him. Thomas called the twin and said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we might die with him. On his arrival, Yeshua found that Lazarus had already been dead, already been four days in the tomb. Bethany was just under two miles from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come from the city to Martha and Mary to condole with them on their brother's death. As soon as she heard that Yeshua was on his way, Martha went to meet him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Yeshua, if you had been here, sir, my brother would not have died. Even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will grant you, Jesus said. Yeshua said, your brother will rise again. I know that he will rise again, said Martha, at the resurrection on the last day. Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. If a man has faith in me, even though he die, he shall come to life. And no one who is alive and has faith shall ever die. Do you believe this? Lord, I do, she answered. I now believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. With these words, she went to call her sister Mary, and taking her aside, she said, the Master is here. He is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she rose up quickly and went to him. Yeshua had not yet reached the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were at the house condoling with Mary, when they saw her start up and leave the house, went after her, for they supposed that she was going to the tomb to weep there. So Mary came to the place where Yeshua was. As soon as she caught sight of him, she fell at his feet and said, Oh, sir, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. When Yeshua saw her weeping and the Jews, her companions, weeping, he sighed heavily and was deeply moved. Where have you laid him? he asked. They replied, Come and see, sir. Yeshua wept. The Jews said, How dearly he must have loved him. But some of them said, could not this man who opened the blind man's eyes have done something to keep Lazarus from dying? Yeshua again sighed deeply. Then he went over to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone placed against it. Yeshua said, Take away the stone, Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him. Sir, by now there will be a stench. He has been there four days. Yeshua said, did I not tell you that if you have faith, you will see the glory of God? So they removed the stone. Then Yeshua looked upwards and said, Father, I thank thee. Thou hast heard me. I knew already that thou always hearest me. But I spoke for the sake of the people standing round, that they might believe that thou didst sent me. Then he raised his voice in a great cry, Lazarus, come forth! The dead man came out, his hands and feet swathed in linen bands, his face wrapped in a cloth. Yeshua said, Loose him, let him go. Um, <clears throat> it sounds, you know, oh, pause.